Yes. 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 Yes
We're going to set it at the fastest synchronization speed, which is 250. There is such a thing as high speed sync. Not going to talk about that today. You're asking your background color. The background is gray. It's the same gray paper that I have because they only buy me one roll a year. So you'll see that every day. It is fashion gray. Is it really? Oh, that's fashion gray. Who knew? I did. Seth knew it because he probably bought it. Uh, so 250 is the, is the sync speed for this camera. Your camera might be 180, 160, 125, 500. You know, it really depends on your camera. And then the third factor there in your exposure triangle is your aperture. What you set that at is based on the room that you're in, right? If I'm in a very dark space, I could shoot at f2, maybe. If I'm in a, in a, a outside, I might have to shoot at f16 if I want to try to like get it dark, right? Um, it's pretty dark in here. We shoot here all the time. Oh, it'd be nice to have a light meter. Could you get a light meter for us? We need a light meter, but, but to actually set the lights up. Thank you, Seth. Um, but for this part, we don't need that. What we're going to do is we're going to set our camera. We're going to use the camera's meter, right? We're going to look at the meter, and we're going to underexpose our shot as much as you can. You know, your, your meter, when you put it in a manual, has that little plus minus three. You move it all the way over to the three, um, and then you take a shot, basically. You want to get a black frame. That's the deal. Um, I'm here a lot, so I know it's usually around 5.6 or F8, so we kind of know that. Um, but if you were just in a space and you didn't know, you would just take a test. That's all you got to do. What you should get is a black frame. I'm tethered into Capture One here, and you can see this frame is indeed black. No, no, um, no. Oh, my gotcha. God. Oh, hold on. It really is black now, okay. Oh, I have notes coming up. Let me turn my Wi Fi off. All right, so this is our frame that we just shot. I'm going to go into my adjusters here just to see how much underexposed I am, and I'm going to slide it across until I start to see her. There she is. Uh, it's about two stops. That's enough. You want to be about two stops underexposed, roughly, uh, two to three. That's because you want room to adjust your shadows in post, right? So if I'm just barely underexposed, then I start bringing my shadows up in post. You know, I might pick up the room light, which I don't really want to do. Dave took another one for some reason. Uh, oh, he changed the, he changed the, uh, the white balance because she was looking blue. OK, so now you got that, right? Next week, we'll cover the rest of, no, this, no I'm just kidding. So now we're going to use a light meter. So this is the Sekonic, uh 308 SU. I'm going to set it. I'll set it before I put it at the camera. Otherwise, I won't know what I'm doing. All right, so I'm going to set it at 100. 100 ISO, 250 of a second. It's in the little lightning bolt, which is flash without a cord. When I press the button, you can actually probably still see it. Is it flashing? You see a little box around the thing flashing? I don't know if you guys can see that. You'll have to trust me. Now it's ready for a flash. So when I hold this uh, at Erica, I point it towards the light. We take a test shot. It's reading F4. What do we want it to read? 5.6, right? Because that's our camera setting. So we're going to turn the light up one stop. Dave can do that from the remote. Five. 6.3, a little bit too much. 5.6, okay, so now it reads 5.6. That should give us the proper exposure. Now, we're gonna do a test shot. I always say this, and then I'm get ready for the people in the comments to write that I'm wrong, but I never trust my meter 100%. I, it's giving me what it thinks is the right exposure. I'm gonna take a test shot. We'll adjust from there if need be. So we'll take a test. So what is the difference between a C stand and a broom, and a boom? That's a good question. All right, I think we're done for the day, actually. That was pretty good. Uh, if you get that shot on the first frame, you can just go home. <laughs> Two minutes. Done. Two, Two minutes. minutes. We're dead. <laughs> Once you got it, that's, that's, a, that's a good one for you. Once you got it, uh, just keep going. Actually, the, what I always was taught when I was an assistant photographer always told me, you shoot until it gets bad again. <laughs> you, right? you shoot till it's good, then you shoot till it gets bad again, then you stop. That's basically, your last frame should be bad, because that means that you've exhausted everything you could do. Um, so somebody's asking about the C-stand. So we have a C-stand with what's called an extension arm on it and an Avenger pin to hold the light. That's uh, something that we do a lot. A boom arm is actually something that's much more sturdy. Usually they can zoom in and out. They usually have a counterweight on the other end, so it's a bit more robust if you're going to actually boom a light. Um, but it works fine for what we're doing. OK, so that's more or less the, the first setup. If we want a dark background, we've got uh, a beauty dish. It looks pretty decent. That, that could be good. Do we want to do a, a light bright background for this? Do you like the dark background, or do you want it to be white? You like dark. You're yes, white. All right, good. So I was going to make it white no matter what you said, so I had to have somebody. All right, so we have another light here. This is a Profoto D2. I'm going to say it right now. Oh, I'm slowing down. They're confused. How many lights do you 
lights are you actually using right now? Okay, I am only using one light so far. But we are going to use a lot of lights. And I'm going to say, I don't even own all the lights we're using here. I'm borrowing some. This is the kind of thing that if you get hired for this job to do, you're going to rent extra lights. Don't feel like you have to have a million lights. Um, we're going to probably use five, I think. You're going to end up using five. In the end. But right now, we're currently only using one light, which is this guy. Not bad, right? Good. All right. So, or maybe it is bad. I don't know. So this is a, we're going to add a light. I'm talking fast today, right? Is that what's happening? Okay. All right, I'm going to wait for everybody to catch up. That's who I'm surprised it came out so good to start off with. So now I'm like, I don't know what to do. I know, it is Erica. She is good. Whoa. All right, so I have another light here. This is a Profoto D2. This is a light that you plug in. Again, this could be anything. Oh, what do you want? A? M and A. Now, this is important. Yeah, I've got to get it right here. Um, you want to keep track of what lights are rare. Right, because we're going to start turning stuff on and off as we go. So we're going to assign each one a letter. This is A. This one's going to be B. So we know A and B go together. Now, a lot of times when you see me do this stuff, I say, my background lights always C, or my hair lights are usually. We're not going to use that rule today, because we want to group our lights as we need them in groups, not to confuse ourselves. So A, B. Right. So I'm going to go down here to my little controller. Now I'm going to put on the spot, because I don't really know how to change this. Oh, no, there we go. B. OK, and this is uh, in channel one, group B. And I'm just going to put it in the background. I think, great. I am not going to use any ambient light during this uh, presentation, I don't think. OK. Cool. We're going to try to overexpose the background by a stop or so, but being that it's gray and we want it to look white. So I'm going to try to get an exposure of, let's say, F8 or F11. Well, that's F25. That might be a bit much. Uh, let me just test something. I learned this, by the way. I, I'm stealing it, uh, stealing stuff from Gavin Hoey. Oh, oh, and turn off A. Right? You can, yeah. I mean, you should. It's still affecting it anyway, so. Yeah, leave it on. Yeah, it's fine. So they're asking if you call this first shot Rembrandt lighting. Would I call this first shot Rembrandt lighting? Absolutely not. It is butterfly lighting. <laughs> did you turn it down? I did. Okay, 4.5 on the back of her head. All right, so what are we over here? 18. Okay, so this is F18 on the wall, right, which is actually, that's one of those newfangled F stops. We didn't have that back in my day, but uh, that's like a little more than F16, which is like three stops almost. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to point the meter at, from the back of her head towards the background, and I'm going to take a reading. If that reading does not exceed this one, I should be OK as far as flare. If this reading was like F8 or something, I'm going to blow out forward this way. Um, thanks, Gavin. I stole that from him. So It's great. It's, it's super useful. So if you, if you didn't want to like meter your background because it was too far away, you could just keep metering the back of their head. Oh, there we go. It's still a bit bright, though, I think. Let's turn it down a smidge. So we're not, I see a little gradation. That is true. We are seeing a little gradation in the corners. So we're getting a little gradation in the corners. If we had more space, if we had a wide angle reflector, if, you know, whatever, if I had a million dollars, you could do a lot of different things. But we're getting a decent background here. It's not terrible. If we were shooting vertically, which we probably would, actually, for a portrait, you wouldn't see the, the, the do you want to shoot one vertically? That way we can, sure. you shouldn't get any gradation if you, if you do that. So to answer the person's question that I kind of like brings over, this kind of lighting is called butterfly lighting. Uh, butterfly creates a butterfly under the news. What Rembrandt is. What software do you use for post editing? What was that? What, what software do you use for post editing? Um, okay, so for post editing, I mean, I usually shoot in the capture one. If I, I, I do use a lot of software for some reason. I shoot in the capture one. I use Lightroom to catalog, uh, and I use Photoshop for retouching. Yeah, there we go. So we can see it's nice and white, even though our background started off being gray. She looks a little bit scared, but that's OK. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. So we can point the light up a tiny bit, because Seth is a perfectionist. OK, try that. All right, so we're just going to, we're getting it a little bit more even. Now, a couple things we could do here if we wanted to. This is going to be, keep in mind, though, our kind of dramatic beauty type shot. So I might leave the shadowing in. If we didn't like that, we could also throw a reflector. Yeah, there we go. 
Oh, oh, I'm doing the thing. Yeah. There we go. Apparently, I do that all the time. <laughs> I'm going to try to get better at it. Would I call this high-key lighting? Sure, why not? <laughs> yeah. We could use a reflector if we want. Now, using a grid on the beauty dish is going to make it hard to kick light in with the reflector. It's going to have to be very close to her because, again, the grid is, uh, like if I put it down here, it's probably not going to do anything. Now it'll do something because I said it won't do anything. That's always okay. Yeah, barely do anything. But if I bring it in closer, it will. Because remember, in order to reflect, it has to see the light. My hands in the shot, of course. You can make her hold it. She likes doing that. Fills in a little bit if we like that. If you don't like that, and again, I'd use this type of thing, the reflector in this case. I would bring it in and out based on your subject. So somebody that needs fill, like let's say if they're older, you know, bad complexion, boom, you bring it in. But if they don't, you want more drama, you leave it out. Right? That's something you can add per shot. That's a bonus, so we're not going to count that towards the three things. I should mention, when I did the five looks with one thing, I mentioned that I saw this video where this guy did this thing with, he called it 10 shots with a beauty dish, and it was literally the exact same shot. Like, I was like, what, you're not changing anything, dude. You're just adding a reflector. Anyways, look for that video. <laughs> You'll find it. <laughs> well, I mentioned it last time, so I have to mention it again. All right, so that's situation number one, right? Yay, Daniel, good job. OK, so now. <laughs> OK, so now, now we're forgetting about that, and we're going to move to our second situation, which is I'm going to use one of my favorite ways to light people if I have to be generic, which is a big softbox. In this case, three-foot octagon. We're going to put it at a classic 45-ish angle. Everything's ish with me because I never put it exactly there. So we're going to put it like right here. right? And we're going to light her kind of, kind of like Rembrandt, not really. <laughs> <laughs> People love to say Rembrandt. Yeah, well, it's one of the classic uh, styles, along with long lighting and short light. I, don't, I never understood what that stuff was. People always say that, and I'm just broad like, and broad and short. Yeah. yeah, I'm like, OK. I just move the lights around until the person looks good, and then I take the picture. That's basically the way to do it. Um, typically, for female subjects, the light in the center, is, which is butterfly lighting, looks good. All right. So this is kind of, again, it's going to wrap around. This is going to, it's a big light source. It's going to light her. It's also going to light our background, because we're going to turn off this, uh, this head in the back as well. We're going to go with like a gray background. And this will be C, yep. right? Cool. Oh, I got to meter it. All right, so we're going to do a meter. Again, this is only C. 6-3, uh, OK. Time to add a smidge. Good. 6-3. It still says 6.3, but we'll just go with it. Yeah. Calling it Daniel Brand Lighting. Daniel Brand. I like it. That's good. We should start to. The Daniel Lighting. The Daniel Lighting. All right, let's try it. Okay. We're ready. So now we're just going to use C. Oh, we're killing it on time. I might be done in two minutes. Ah, that's a little bit more Rembrandt y, right? Not exactly, but it's kind of. This is more moody. We're probably going to want to use. A reflector for most people. Fill in, right? I think the whole thing's a little bit dark, though. We turn the light up a smidge. Yeah. Could you use a three-foot octa with a speed light? Uh, could we use a three-foot octa with a speed light? You could. It's not ideal. Uh, speed lights tend to uh, not be as powerful as a studio strobe. So the larger your light source, the more light it's going to eat. But you most certainly could do it. There you go, right? Simple as that. You could also use a hot light. You'd, then you'd have to turn off the lights in here, though. OK, does that make sense? Also, let me point something out here, because I feel like it. Right? You can see this light on the top is a bit more specular, right? You can see the highlights are bringing up more. The whole thing's a little bit brighter looking, right? It's got a different feel to it. It even has a different color, because I'm using a silver a uh, lined dish versus the, an interior of a softbox going through multiple levels of diffusion. See, thanks, Greg Turner. Thanks, Greg Turner. I just say whatever Seth tells me to. So if you <laughs> Also, I'm going to start advertising. So if people want to send me shirts, I can wear them. <laughs> OK, so that's cool. Um, let's try something. Do you want to do um, hair? Or yeah, let's try a hair light. Okay. Why not? We like hair lights, right? Separation lights, kickers, if you will. We're going to do it with that? Yeah, I think we can do this. 
Okay, so yes, I can repeat Gavin's tips all day long, actually. I'm gonna start a new series where I just redo Gavin's videos like one year later. <laughs> right, and then deal with the next year. Okay, so, so one of the, the things about lighting against a white background, if, especially if you're changing a background to white by overexposing it like we are here, is that the background becomes a light source, right? Think about it like this, you're bouncing light off this background, it's coming back towards the camera, it is a light source. If you shoot into a light source, it could flare your lens, right? One way to make sure you're not getting too much light coming forward and having too much uh, flare, and also to make sure that the hair doesn't get separated, is to be sure the exposure on the back of the head is this not greater than the exposure in the front. So if I'm metering 5.6 on the front of her face, I just meter the same thing at the background, or less, and then I, I'll know I'm not gonna flare, right? Simple but effective tips from Gavin Hoey on Adorama TV. You could actually do that as a two minute tip. You should do it. Oh, he's doing it. That's a great tip. Yeah, you got to spread it out because now I've said it. You know. I steal Mark's stuff all the time too. We would just steal each other's stuff. That's what we do. Well, every, there's only like 10 things that photographers do and we just all do it a little bit differently. So we spread it out. And... Oh, my own channel. Right, I also have a channel on YouTube, if you guys don't know, Daniel Horton Photographer, where you can see non-G-rated stuff. No, that's not true, I don't. We shoot live. We shoot live there. Well, we'll see. We could shoot a full length on my channel. No, I'm just kidding. No, 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 we're not set up to do it today, but we will. I promise a full length. I promise somebody, they sent me an email, they were like, Daniel, you never do full length. And I'm like, but we'll do a full length shot. Actually, I'm doing umbrellas next week, and we'll do full length then. Flashpoint or Glow or whatever they call them, Glow, Glow which is uh, Adorama's brand, is coming out with like a gazillion umbrellas and they sent them all to me. I have like a thousand umbrellas right now. Yeah, and they're the deep umbrellas and shallow umbrellas and they have a new way to open them. Have you seen them yet? They look pretty cool. You don't send me stuff. No, I don't. Well, I'll give you some. You're an Orlin man. <laughs> so we're gonna add this. This is a Profoto uh, one by three strip bank in a Profoto uh, B2. It has a grid on it. Now, the only problem is that we're not going to be able to get out of the shot now. Because huh? we're going to do the other shot. Which other shot. The one like this. So maybe we should just use a regular head for this. All right, let's, let's, let's make a choice here. For this shot, this gray background shot, would you rather see it with a colored background or with a hair light? Oh. Color? David said color? All right, let's do a colored background. No hair light. Okay. All right, so we'll do that. We can do a colored background. Now, I know, Dave just set it up. D do it with the hair light first, because Dave already set it up. No, no, no. No, no, he's not going to do it. We'll do a hair light in the next session. Yeah, all right. So we have already set up, because I knew you were going to say that. Uh, so I'm just going to, since you already set this up, I'm just going to switch the heads. No, you don't have to. Oh, you already set them up the right channels? Okay. All right. Oh, you already did it. Oh, you're so good. All right. I've got the Profoto B2 back here. It has a gel on it. It's a CTO gel. Um, which is like a warming gel, so we're gonna make it a, like an orangey color. Um, we're gonna do the same thing we did before, except we're going to blast it with some color. Now, one thing to keep in mind, this softbox, as we can see, is hitting the background, right? Color, uh, some of the light from the softbox is hitting our background, which means that it's going to be a little bit more, uh, uh, yeah, washed out. The color's gonna be a little more wash, washed out. If you want good saturated color, you need to make sure that uh, your, none of the light from the front's hitting your background. So we're not going to get saturated, but we'll give it a shot. They're all wanting colors. Okay, good. They like color online, so. What would you recommend for a first light source if you're just starting out? Okay, so if you're just starting out and, and uh, for your first light, Profoto B1X. Yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, it depends on your budget, really, but there's a lot of good things out there. If you, if you could only have one light, though, my first thing that I always recommend is a speed light. You can always keep it in your bag. They're relatively inexpensive. It does TTL, so you can, you can use the automatic functions if you want. Uh, that's 100% what I would choose first, is some kind of a speed light, whatever system you have. Doing speed lights on the 19. And Seth is doing speed lights on the 19, so if you're online in California or something, you want to come see Seth, get on a plane. Yeah, speed light or an on-camera flash is something that everybody should have in their bag. It's just a really simple thing, and it can change everything just by having it with you. Remember, flash gives you control. That's the key to flash. We made this face dark. That's important. 
You know, it, it, there's a certain skill in photography and seeing great light and just finding it and shooting it, and that's awesome. But when you're on, a, on an assignment, oh, that's kind of cool. When you're on an assignment, you know, and somebody requires something or they say, I want my background to be colored, you know, you have to be able to, to, to do it. Oh, did, is there a grid in that? Yeah. Oh, nice. And there's a grid in that because we added a grid. We like that. It's like a little, uh, like a halo. Let's give it a little bit more light, though, and I'll do a little reflector. Yeah, it's CTO. So the gel is a full CTO, which is color temperature orange. It is the gel that you use to change uh, daylight to tungsten balance. There we go. All right, he's doing math. Remember, photography is math. Stay in school, kids. There we go. It's like a sunburst. You know what, though? I'm going off script. Was there a script? Was there ever a script? <laughs> what if we turn off this and turn on this one instead? Well, okay. it's getting crazy here. I know. One of the keys to doing this, though, is making sure that all of your readings are based off the initial 5, 6 exposure. Right? That allows me to switch lights as much as I want, and they'll all be exposed properly. Right? This is the key. So you can't just randomly expose stuff. I mean, you can, as long as it's the same. <laughs> Random exposure. <laughs> you could do that. I mean, whatever your basic, I'm saying 5.6 because that's my exposure. If it was F8, if it was F11, if it was F1.2, which we could do. No, we're not doing 1.2. There we go. Okay, do we see the difference there, right? Now. The background light is the same. We haven't changed it. But because none of the light from the key, which is our beauty dish in this case, is hitting the background, it's much more saturated. We have much more of a, of a halo effect. So you know, you got both options there. So many options available to you. We could grid the softbox. And we could grid the softbox as well to keep it off the background. But if we tell Dave to keep the softbox off the background, he will spend the next hour making it happen. And we're not going to do that because we don't have time. <laughs> it won't take me that long. OK, do it. go ahead and do it. You can also feather the light. Go ahead and do it. Well, we can also feather the light a bit. Like if we wanted less saturation, we can just turn the light more. One thing we want to avoid, though, because we have so many lights going on, is, but yeah, a grid would definitely be an option. I don't have that kind of budget. Yeah. We can also add a gobo. Can we get can we get Dave Gerben to hold a gobo for us? Yeah. Why don't you hold a reflector? Come on, get some airtime. For two minutes. David doesn't think that I'm using enough equipment. Okay. Like, yeah. All right, David Bergman, woo! Okay. In two minutes, things up. Okay, good. Thanks. There we go. All right. So the flag is going to prevent some of the light from hitting the background. You know, on that side. Very nice. Well played, sir. All right, good. So yeah, there's lots of ways to do it. A grid would definitely be key. One thing people always ask is, do I need a grid for my softbox? You don't need one, but boy, does it, it help when you want to do stuff. Um, and Erica always wants to shoot with photographers that have grids. She's told me that before. So if you want this style, this level of model, you got to uh, you got to have. All right, so that's two, right? We're basically got two going. Um, we got the halo-y thing. We've got the the we're cranking. All right, let's do the third one. Okay. So now I want to do something really dramatic. We're going to have her spin into a profile towards the strip box, which is fitted with the grid. And this, of course, is going to just send the light this way, right? None of it, hopefully, is going to hit the background. We're going to turn off our background lights. Again, I'm metering it. 4.5. Five, six. You're probably going to have to cheat more, just a little bit, though. But Dave will tell you. I did the art director thing where you, told, where you pose the model when you're not looking through the camera, which you shouldn't do. Right? Now we got some drama like for your mama. <laughs> right? So now we got that. We could actually, no, we can't. If you were doing only one shot, we could play around with it. But remember, we want to keep everything at 5.6. So uh, actually, turn on that light. Let's see what happens. This one? Yeah. Why not? 
I'm going to turn on the octagon to see, uh, use it like a fill on the other side. Did I just see David Bergman? Yes, you did just see David Bergman. <laughs> you got to come to New York. He never really going to show up here. Nice. He knows how to hold a flag. Cool. Yes, he does. <laughs> you know, then we have this look, which is also kind of a little bit interesting. I don't like it, though. All right, all right, let's pretend like that never happened. It's a shockingly even background, though. Yeah, all right. So we've got the moody. Actually, try looking directly at the light. Actually, I'm going to actually move this back a little bit. I know, I know, Dave. Hi, David Bergman. <laughs> if you guys have anything you want to see done in two minutes, go ahead and say it in the comments. Yes. And David needs a list of. <laughs> I have a constant shot clock going. Yes. Life, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> There we go. So now, you know, now we have like a, a cool uh, profile shot. Um, and we could, again, combine things. If we wanted a white background, we could turn on B, I guess it is. This is where you got to keep track of your numbers. They're asking if you can add the background light with this look. Yes, we can add the background light, which we're about to do. <laughs> Actually, we're going to get a white background. Oh, that's weird and awesome. I did that on purpose with the dark moon back there. Oh, that's the other he light. Look at us screwing things up. Nest yeah, we need a better nest going on. Ah. Uh, yeah, we're going to have to do a little leg spin here. I'm going to have to use more than one hand. I'm just going to do this. No, I'm good. Thank you, though. Helpful models. OK. All right, that should do it. We basically threw a black shadow on the wall, which is kind of cool. It kind of suits our personality a little bit. It's like that freckle calling her evil thing. <laughs> there we go. We got rid of it. So now we have a, a white background. We could also get that warm colored background with the circle by switching that one on and the white one off. I feel like I want a different color than warm, though. Oh. Let's just start pressing buttons. Did you see me do that thing that people always do when you're shooting? They walk in front of your camera and they like half duck. Like it didn't I, I don't help at all. Oh, Ooh, is it? Ooh. Oh, that's kind of interesting, right? They're saying, what about rotating the strip box to horizontal? Could rotate the strip box to horizontal. Why not? Let's just shout out random stuff and do it. Yeah, let's just do stuff. <laughs> Be a dolphin, do tricks. <laughs> Stupid photographer tricks. All right, pick, pick a color. It's funny. Uh, what, what do they want to see? Oh, yeah. I'm rotating the strip. Watch this. Oh. Look at that. What's going to happen there? Who knows? Let's try and. <laughs> so now we got a little bit more light wrapping around, which is kind of nice. Can you go over again what that black splotch in the back was on that last shot? OK, so the black splotch in the back of the last shot was a mistake. <laughs> However, if you ever do this and the client is like, oh, oh, I love that, you did it on purpose. That's basically. OK, so what happened was the Profoto light, even though it has a flat front, right, so it looks like it's just throwing the light forward, actually has a pretty wide spread, 120 degrees. The other light was right here, so when it lit, it threw a shadow up on the wall. Could be anything. Could be. Bunny ears. There you go. Oh, you got white again, though. Did you turn on the white one? No. No, it's the wrong one. Hold on, you got to turn the right white light, the right light for that to work. I'm doing it. Why would I not do it? I just do things. Nope. That's the modeling light, so we can see it if I want to do like a little like a like a rabbit. Right? And nothing happened. No. That's because my fingers are not big enough to have to cause a shadow. So it wrapped around. I knew that was going to happen. No, I didn't. So yeah, so whatever. If you put something there, it'll throw a shadow. Was that, did I answer that question? I got distracted. Right. Can, you try the grid? Can I try it without the grid? <laughs> which grid? That grid or the oh, which grid? Hold on. Um, I'm guessing the background grid. Hold on, though. Before we get too off. Kilter, although I kind of like the white background here. Which one do we like better? See, now, now we have options, right? So when somebody comes in, I can say, which one do you like? You just confused your right. art director. Which one's? 
right? So I've got options, right? I have that, I have that. I have that even, right? You come in for your profile shot. Hey, how do you like it? You want white, you want color gel, you want uh, black. That's just a button press, right? It could change that. You for your other look? You know, do you want, uh, oh, should have just, let's see. do you want, uh, yeah, come on. Do you want this like uh, color background on the gray or do you just want? The same without the background. Right? So we have options. And then of course the first look can either be that, that, or, didn't we shoot this one with the beauty dish? Yeah, or that, right? So we have three different background options, three different uh, key light options, right? And we can play around and mix them. So actually, we did nine shots. Anybody who only paid for the three-shot workshop? And you're only 35 minutes deep. And we're only 35 minutes deep. You, this is also makes you go faster, apparently. What was the question, though? Turn off the grid? We can do that. All right, so we're going to remove the grid on the background. That's going to give us more spread. Let's change the color, too, because why not do two things at once? Am I still going to Uh, I don't know. How do you want to be? I don't care. I had, oh, did you pick a color? Blue, really? This is why we always do blue, Seth, because the audience always picks blue. They look like a lavender purple. I was with her lips a little bit. I like purple, actually. I'm a big fan of purple. <laughs> All right, so this is the gel holder for the, for the OCF stuff. If you haven't seen it before, it just clips on the front. Of course, I, I, I got the thing of gels that they sell you, but then we just cut a bunch of gels ourselves so we could have any color we want. There we go. Seth cut them with his scalpel. It was with a scalpel. It was. Yeah, I, don't, I don't make things up. Usually, let's try that. Now, it's a different color. It's eating up less light. We could remeter it, but hey, you know what? Let's just turn it down one stop. And let's go back to the beauty dish. Yeah, we're gonna go beauty dish, key, blue color gel background, because that was the request. Just gonna hang out back here for a minute. Cool. Oh, you want to uh, meter the. Yeah, so let's meter the background light. Again, we want to get that background light. Now, for the color, with the, for the color, we probably want to get on exposure. Oh, nope, that was white. Yep. You don't want to look right at the light when it's firing, I'll tell you that right now. I think that the this one's firing. Nope, I am wrong. Okay, go. You're right. Perfect. 3.6. Let's actually try that. It's underexposed by about a stop-ish, um, which is going to give us more color saturation. Remember, because we're using the beauty dish up front, our background is basically black. So whatever we get back there is going to be more subtle, and then we can just up the power as we go to see how much we like it. OK, so. Yep. Well, this is all beauty dish. This is it. We're going to add the last shot. So this is what it looks like with no background, this upper corner. And of course, we have the white light. And now we just shot that. All right. Blue background, no grid, colored gel on the light, underexposed by about half a stop. That gives us that, like, uh, electric blue. No post-production necessary. Yeah. I mean, we can, we can make the color background just about any color. We can add this reflector in there. Also, if you if add a little fill, right? And that's basically it. Simple as that, right? Easy. And we can change it up as much as we want. Now, I probably wouldn't want to run in and be changing the gel colors for each person unless you have time, because this is really designed around the idea that we're trying to be fast. But if you have time, yeah. you could get several of these gel things preloaded and just swap them pretty quickly. You saw how quickly I walked back there and did it, because remember, it's only firing when we want it to. So if we don't want the blue, if we want white, we can always switch back to that or black, right? And again, the white doesn't even have to be white. The white could be gray, right? I could turn the light down. So depending on your actual scenario, you can, uh, you can light it however, however to suit your, your client base. Does that make sense? Questions?
No? OK. So let's run through all of them. Just to be, well, all of the main ones. A and B. A and B. <laughs> yep, yeah. And then E by itself? You need a cheat sheet. Yeah. Like, okay. Yeah, exactly. No, no, no. I think, I think we did it. <laughs> I'm just going to stand here and let Dave do it, because now it's set up. Don't screw it up. OK, should we reflect? Do, do a quick run through. All right, so we're going to run through each of these now in, in turn. So somebody sits down in front of me. We're going to do the beauty dish with grid and the white background, yes. okay, which is a Profoto D2. I'm also going to add the reflector because I think that's appropriate for her. Right? So that's the first scenario, right? Nice and bright. Be good for her passport picture, you know, whatever. Nice and clean. You can put that on websites, do whatever you want with it. What's that? Okay. Now we're going to do uh, the, the, the softbox, which is going to give us a grayish background. And we're going to do the, oh, actually, we've got to add the grid again to keep with our original. Uh, we'll leave the blue on there, though, just because, which means we have to re-meter this. Unless you remember where you were set before, which you probably don't. We're adding the grid, so it's probably going to take a stop of light. We'll add one stop of light because we added the grid, right, roughly. OK. This is going to give us grayish background, nice soft light across our face with uh, blue and a reflector again, just because. Right? Now we have the blue circle with a little vignette going on, nice soft light. And then, finally, for the finale, we can uh, spin her sideways and get the dramatic shot, black background. Now again, that was octagon, gridded light in the back with a blue gel. This one is strip box, grid only. So the black background is going to go black. You're asking if there's like a logic for the white background with the beauty dish specifically. Okay, so why am I using each? That's a good question. Why am I using each uh, concept, right? So I've used the white background of the beauty dish because the beauty dish, it, the one I'm using anyways, is silver. It's very uh, punchy and specular. It's very bright, the light that's on it. So using a bright background kind of works with that. The whole feel of the shot is very bright and even. The soft box has kind of wafty shadows that come across it, which I'm then doing like a vignette on the background to kind of suit that background. Um, and this one is very dramatic and side lit, and that's why I'm going black. So that, that's why I made these choices. But your client, of course, if they like, for instance, the profile with the white, you can always switch it. Clients usually have bad taste, but you got to do what they want. Yeah. That's what I was about to do. He's, he's on it. Is that too many a tip? All right. So we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna try to bounce a little light back from the gridded light. Now, remember, when you're bouncing light, It'll never be as bright as the front, but we should be able to get a little bit of separation. You're asking if you can do this with multiple pocket Can you do it with pocket wizards? Absolutely. The, in this particular case, can you me? no me. Oh. So that, actually, if you check out Adorama TV, there's a video uh, called Three Looks and One Second that I did maybe a year ago. Um, even if it doesn't do anything, you still have to pretend like it did. Oh, see, that made a big No, look, you can see a little bit of separation right here. Um, I, where I use Pocket Wizard Multimaxes that can automatically uh, channel jump or uh, zone jump or group jump, whatever they call it. So you literally, each time I press the button, it changed to the other one, which makes it really fast and cool. Um, but I, I find your average subject isn't going to know to go, you know, to look at the different lights. So I would rather shoot five or six exposures this way, five or six that way, five or six that way to get your, your, your setup rather than going each one separately. But certainly Pocket Wizards can do it. Uh, speed lights that have different groups of zones and do it. Uh, you could even do it with lights that don't have groups and zones if you had an assistant or something to just turn things on and off. You could also do it that way. I mean, you, there's many ways to do it. This is just really simple. You could be here. Once you're set up, subject sits down, boom, 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 three looks. Another subject sits down, boom, 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 three looks, or the appropriate look for them, right? And you can choose, pick and choose what they want. Questions, thoughts? Cool. Huh. This. She does have a nice nose. It's very. Uh, I like the one I like the freckle. Yeah. All right. All right. So right. So your nose is good for Rembrandt lighting. So let's go back to the 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 softbox look, which is straight on. Okay. And we'll leave the shadow to make it more Rembrandt-y. Rembrandtish, Rembrandt flavor. Other questions? You could actually even have more than three. Yes. Are you using for the zone or you're uh, to set the morning off? Is 
attach the pro photo? Yeah, so this is the pro photo uh, uh, air remote, the non-TTL one. The reason why I'm using non-TTL is because this has up to F in it. All the lights have up to F in it, but the TTL remotes, uh, although I think the Sony one has, has a fourth one. Now, one of them has four now, but the, the Canon and Nikon ones just have uh, three, A, B, and C. So you wouldn't be able to tweak it as much. You could still do it. You could have your three shots the way they are, but, um, but I, I use this one for that reason. And plus, once I'm working, I'm not going to use TTL anyways in this kind of setup. I wouldn't change it. Like, I'm going to leave everything the same uh, once I'm going. And it's five on the Canon. It's five on the Canon? Well, it's five on the Canon. Really? Oh, not mine. Mine only has A, B, and C. Uh, in the camera, but if you use the external SD3RT, yeah. you get five. Oh, okay. Oh, you're right. So, so David's saying on Canon's own with, the, uh, with the, their speed lights, there's five. Right, right. Yeah, and Nikon also has a bunch. Right. So yeah, just the Pro Photo one is limited to three. I'm sorry, I'll clarify. Yes, the Pro Photo Canon TTL remote only has three. Yeah, yeah. Canon, the 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 600 Canon uh, with the radio remote is yeah, it's, it's pretty sweet. We just did a speed light demo like what a month ago. Not even. Yeah, it's really really nice. So check that out. That's online. Um, yeah, cool. And there now we got white background, right? So that's basically it, right? That's the concept. Somehow I did it really fast today. Yeah, you just shrink. in 46 minutes. Does anybody want to see anything while we're here? You got me for another 15 minutes. Look at that. Dave's just killing it. Yeah, do it. Uh, well, no, and, and you know what's cool about this is you could actually, if you do have time with somebody, you could. You want a model? I don't mind. All right. I want to see hair lights. All right. I so can let, take my hat off. No, no, whatever you like. So, so we got, you know, he's here. He just won a Grammy. We're going to make a quick shot of him. Sit down. Right? We're doing the Grammys. You're out. See how that is? See how quickly? That's how, that's how it's fickle, right? Right? So, again, now, in his case, I picked you specifically because he has a hat on, right? So the hat, of course, is going to be a problem for some of the setups. So you'll have to think about that, right? That's why specifically. Or you can work with it, right? Make the hat work. Right? Boom. Right? That's that one. Let's do all of them so we can see. So now this, if he keeps his head like flat to the beauty dish, he's going to have a big shadow. You can play around with that, right? Actually, turn the modeling light on and try to just shadow his eyes if we can. Can you kill that for us, Seth, so we can see it better? Yeah, just for a second. We're going to kill the lights just because I want to see what the mono light's doing. Yeah, and try to get it so it's like kind of just under his eyes. And maybe we'll throw a little reflector in. Yeah. Boom. Now we're going to have like Moody with the, with the light coming under his eyes, right? That's kind of cool. Actually, it might have been better without the fill, right? And then we can go towards here for the actual shot, which I think is going to look best with you. Yep. They're asking about what if you want to do something with the lens flare, light shining into the lens. Lens flare, okay. I don't think we have another light, do we? Well, light shining into the lens is what they're saying. Yeah, I mean, you could, we could do that. Why not? We'll kill the set and we'll, 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 we'll do something else. Boom. Oh, yes, that's nice. <laughs> actually, see, now in his case, I actually think, now turn this on. Yeah. Do that same thing. Here. Yeah, yeah, you were looking good. And now bang this guy bad boy on. And again, this is going to allow you to quickly go through your lights. It's going to give a little fill on that side. I think it'd be nice. Might be, might be too much, but we'll see. Yeah, a bit much. So actually, too much. If we had gridded that octagon, we probably would be OK. Yeah, maybe background or something just for, yeah, E. Perfect. Do you want to be the photographer? No, that's just me out. There we go. See, <laughs> right? Now this combination is going to work for us, right? So you can kind of figure it out and change your combinations as you go, depending on who's sitting in front of you. So it's not just about shooting each person and each one. You can always pick the one that you like best for each person. So cool. All right, thank you. Well done. Yay. New pictures for Tinder. Good. All right, so uh, somebody wanted a shot with a lens flare. Back. Yeah, you're back. back just because we're a pretty, again, remember too, and I know people do this because you're learning and you want to replicate things. Sure, this is what I did, but this, this is just a concept, right? You could, these could be any setups. As long as you have the space to put the lights, they could be any scenario that you want. So if you wanted a different scenario, um, actually, let's do the hair light first. So let's say that we brought this back and made this a hair light instead, right? And you'll be facing forward. I guess we'll do this with the octagon. Never put it perfectly straight. You always got to do a little tilt. Pro tip. Yeah, it's like, you know, you can never re replicate that. That's like uh, a. They're asking about using a special Seth reflector. A special one? The special Seth reflector. The special Seth reflector. 
handcrafted. Oh, cool. Actually, that plus that. Right? And now we've got the, like, the hair like feel. And we probably could still do, do just this light and do turn back towards it. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, just sideways. And you still might be able to pull off that, that side light. No? Just see. Just, just this guy, yeah. What I probably would do if I was going to be doing this all day, because I forget things, is once I was set up, I'd probably put like sticky notes on them to say which ones they are. Yeah, and you could still do something here that's interesting. That's actually kind of cool. Am I going to get any of that in there? Yeah, I, might, I don't know if I can get any of this. I'll try. Still in the shot? This is probably doing nothing. It's totally doing nothing. I, I, I gave up. I, see, we gave up. I was like, boom. All right. It, was, it wasn't doing anything anyways. Actually, do that again. That's a nice shot without it. But was that actually doing something? It was doing something. See, never give up on yourself, kids. Jeez. <laughs> there we go. You jammed on our orbital bone. Yeah, I got the orbital bone, whatever that means. All right, so. Yeah, so I could still make that work. So now we've changed it, right? Now we've got, we still didn't lose our last shot, and now we've got a hair light shot if we want for the, uh, for the, for the gray. In fact, you know, now this is two options again. Same, just playing around. And we could rotate through these depending on who we're shooting. Right? Makes sense? And your question? Or you were just like, yeah. yeah. All right, good. Other questions? No? OK. Let's do one with lens flare. It's hard to flare the lens, though. Oh, you want to do that? OK, just use this light. OK. Yeah, let's do it. All right. Remember, since I already used this softbox once, I can charge the client for it. So even though I'm putting it on the ground right now, we're still going to bill for that. And the paper. Actually, if you guys can write in and ask them to get me a new roll of paper, because you can see here that uh, All right. All right. it's already past January, and I haven't got my new roll yet. I got you more paper than you've ever had in this whole space. Don't start. One roll per year. Oh, that's interesting. Good. Now, uh, what it would be? Oh, yeah, sure. I like it. She's a star. Actually, let's put color on it. We'll do that first. Full body is not going to happen today. I'm sorry. Tune in next week. We'll do full body. I am going to do full body next week, seriously. Actually, let's do the beauty yeah. dish. Yeah, yeah. We're going to use the beauty dish. I'm going to add a little bit of color to this, a little magenta. I don't hold anything at this level. Yes. <laughs> we got crew for that stuff right there. <laughs> All right. Just I'm above holding gels that are half a gram. <laughs> I got. I, I, listen, I want my coffee. There we go. Oh. 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 Nice well done. Well done, sir. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. So yeah, you, you, you see, we can play around. So that's the flare. Anything else? Uh, Stupid photographer tricks. What light is that? This is a Profoto B2. B2. What so, are the main ones? This is a D2. D2. So B2, D2. It's kind of like Star Wars. <laughs> Uh, so the B2 is a battery-powered light. It plugs into this pack here. You can put up to two heads in it. This is an uh, AC-powered light, faster flash duration, more powerful. And the B1Xs are battery-powered, uh, more powerful than the B2, but less so than the D2. Your best recommendation for DIY materials for gels? OK, so if you want to DIY with gels, uh, oh, is it gone? What? The video that you did. Christmas bags. Uh, you saw my Instagram. So check out last oh, no, X witness. It's an ALC article. It's an oh, it's an ALC article. Check out adorama.com slash ALC. Uh, search Seth Miranda. Yep. Or gels. Christmas gels. Yeah. So basically put Seth Miranda. He did a, uh, for our Instagram, if you guys don't know, every Monday-ish, around 3 o'clock-ish, uh, Seth does a live stream on Instagram, which goes away. Um, so you got to learn that stuff, and you know, it learns what it goes away. Okay, so, but he actually shot with uh, the with worst with hype man in the history of the game. <laughs> so you got to check it out right away because it goes away. Isn't that like a thing? Yeah. yeah. Okay, we're gonna figure that out. But anyways, it goes away. So tissue paper, Christmas bags, 
Uh, uh, listen, I used to share a studio with a product photographer. He used to fill up wine bottles with, dip, with water and then use food coloring yeah, yeah. and shoot light through it. You just eat something light, light that's a two minute tip right there. Boom, right there. Add that to the list. Right? And, and that's how you can, you can create really organic light that way. You can jiggle the bottles as you're shooting, it creates different waves in it. You can you know, use 7 Up. Do they still make 7 Up? That's still a thing, right? <laughs> Do they still make 5 Alive? I don't know, because. Yes, right. Why, 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 why would you DIY them? I don't know. Because well, it's fun. Gels, gels are seven dollars a whole. Yeah, I mean, gels are pretty inexpensive, but if you needed to, to just take a two thousand dollar light, use a sharpie on it, and you're done. All right. Listen, he just had a question. Let's be nice, or she. I don't know. All right. Anyways, you can DIY with a lot of different things. Anything the light passes through or bounces off of will pick up color, right? So Seth does a. You'll never see it because he doesn't do it live, but he does a demo where he bounces off purple paper, and you get purple shadows because anything the light hits is gonna pick up that color. Um, Which is one reason why you should always do a custom white balance uh, if, you, before, if you're doing anything that's color sensitive right before you start. Just to reiterate, that's for flash, not hot lights. Okay, obviously that's for flash, not hot lights. If you put your Christmas bag on your hot light and light it on fire, I am not responsible. Um, yeah, I hot lights. Yeah, you can also melt gels on strobes if you shoot really fast or the modeling light. I mean, you know, you can melt gels. Speed lights especially, they'll burn right through them. Yeah. Right yeah. So gels, you know, they're, they're pretty inexpensive. Um, I recommend if you don't know what to get, Roscoe has a, uh, several a, packs that have, have varieties. Demo. You have what? an on-set gel demo so you can check out. Yeah, and I also have an on-set gel demo, demo apparently. Where? Yeah, a like live you one? used Annalise for it here. Oh, yeah, I did it here. So it's live. You can check it out. I've done a lot of things. So, yeah, check out the on-set live stuff. If you want to see gel stuff, I do all kinds of things. Set through the plastic bags. Your own, your own channel. I also did it on my, my, my YouTube. Uh, okay, other questions? that aren't related to DIY gels because they're, they're bashing you, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, you guys are good, you got everything? You can do this now? You got it? Okay, good. All right, guys, thanks for watching. We're gonna be back at three on Facebook, though. So if you guys are watching from home, be on Facebook at three, check us out. We'll do the same thing, but different. Um, we'll have Erica still, Dave will be here. Thanks, Seth. Thanks, David Bergman, special guest star. <laughs> check him out every Monday at 11, right, for uh, two minute tips. And uh, I'll see you next time, guys. Can the video be viewed uh, on a later time? Yeah. You